Our objectives in this lesson are the following. Illustrate and construct a sampling distribution of the sample means. Create a histogram of the sampling distribution of the sample means. And illustrate and compute the standard error of the mean. Let's have a quick review of our previous lesson. Match the parameter and a statistic to its corresponding formula. Number one, population variance. If it is variance, we are looking for a variable raised to the second power. And since this is population, we're looking for a Greek letter. So this is the answer. Next one, sample mean. Since it is a sample, we're looking for a Roman letter. So this will be the answer. Next one, population mean. So again, Greek letter. So here is the answer. Sample variance, again variance, variable raised to the second power, and sample Roman letter. So this is the answer. Population standard deviation, so we are looking for a variable raised to the first power, and since it's population, so Greek letter. So this is the answer. And last one, again a variable raised to the first power, but this time Roman letter. Here is the answer. Let us define sampling distribution. It is a theoretical probability distribution of the possible values of some sample statistic that would occur if we were to draw all possible samples of a fixed size from a given population. Let me explain this by giving an example. Listen attentively. For instance, you want to know the average weight of children age 5 in your barangay. You randomly select 10 children and compute for the sample mean to estimate the population mean. Consider the sample mean as your first sample mean. Suppose you take another sample of 10 children from your barangay. The sample mean you will get will be your second sample mean. Now, would first and second sample means be equal? Not necessarily. Let us say you take again another sample of 10 children. Every time you take another set of sample, you will get a value of sample mean. Suppose you have 100 sample means. The distribution of all these sample means is the sampling distribution of the sample means. And you can now create a histogram that will give you a picture of what the distribution of the sample means look like. I will show you how to do this in our example later. So what is the purpose of sampling distributions? Sampling distribution is used to calculate the probability of sample statistic. This is very useful in making inferences about the population parameter. Remember, we make use of sample to make inferences or conclusions about the population parameter. In this video lesson, we are going to focus our discussion on sampling distribution of the sample means. You might ask me, Mom, are there any other sampling distributions? Yes, there are. For instance, we have sampling distribution of the sample proportions. We also have sampling distribution of the sample variance. What is sampling distribution of the sample means? The sampling distribution of the sample means is the probability distribution of all possible sample means, meaning it is the possible values of all sample means and their probabilities of occurring for a sample of a particular size. Here are the steps in constructing sample distribution of sample means. We are going to discuss this one by one together with an example. Let's start. We are given here a population size of equal to 5 and a sample size of 2. Our population is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. First step, let us determine the number of sets of all possible random samples. And that is using this formula. This is read as the combination of n objects taken n at a time. So we have here without replacement. Because if there is, then there is another formula that we are going to use. But on this video lesson, we are going to focus on without replacement. So our capital N is equal to 5. Our small letter N is equal to 2. Let us substitute those values here. 
This is 5 exclamation point. This is a factorial notation. And this is equal to 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. This one is 2 factorial. 2 times 1. 5 minus 2 is equal to 3. So 3 factorial. 3 times 2 times 1. We can now cancel 3 times 2 times 1. And we can simplify 4 divided by 2. And that is equal to 2. For the numerator, we have 5 times 2. That is 10 divided by 1. And 10 divided by 1 is equal to 10. Now, let me show you how it is done using a calculator. With this particular example, here are the steps. Number 1, press 5. Number 2, press shift. Why shift? Because this is a second function. Look at here. The shift is written in yellow letters. So, if you are going to make use of second functions, those written in yellow letters, you have to press shift first. And then divide. Why divide? Because there we have NCR. Next, we press 2. And finally, equal sign. This will give you 10. Same answer. So, this is read as the combination of 5 taken to at a time. Step 2. List all the possible random samples and solve for the sample mean of each set of sample. Let us recall our population and our sample size. We are going to need a table with two columns here. For the sample, these are the set of possible sample that we can create. And this one is sample mean denoted by x bar. Remember that our sample size is 2. Meaning, we are going to take a sample of size 2 at a time. Let us start with 1. So we have 1, 2, 1, 3, 1, 4, 1, 5. So we are done with 1. Let's proceed with 2. Can we have 2, 1? No, because we already have 1, 2. Can we have 2, 2? No, because like what I've said, this is without replacement. So you cannot get two twos at the same time. So we have two three, two four, two five. Let's continue with three, three four, three five. And we have four five. For the sample mean, we simply have to add the two samples and then divide it by two because we have two samples. So one plus two divided by two is equal to 1.5. 1 plus 3 divided by 2 is equal to 2. 1 plus 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2.5. 1 plus 5 divided by 2 is equal to 3. 2 plus 3 divided by 2 is equal to 2.5. 2 plus 4 divided by 2 is equal to 3. 2 plus 5 divided by 2 is equal to 3.5. 3 plus 4 divided by 2 is equal to 3.5. 3 plus 5 divided by 2 is equal to 4. 4 plus 5 divided by 2 is equal to 4.5. Step 3. Construct a frequency and probability distribution table of the sample means. To do this, let us recall our answer in number 2. Let us arrange our sample means in ascending order. Let us start with 1.5, then 2, 2.5, then 3. We already have 2.5, we already have 3, 3.5, then we have 4, and 4.5. For the frequency, we just have to count how many times did we see the sample mean. So for 1.5, it occurred only once, 2, just once, 2.5, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3.5, 1, 2, 4, once, and 4.5 also once. Now let us get the total. Let us add all of this. 1, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 10. So the total is 10. For the probability, simply get the frequency divided by the total. So for this one, we have 1 over 10 or 0 0.1. Also 1 over 10, 0 0.1. 2 over 10 or 0 0.2, also 0 0.2, 0 0.2. This is 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, 0 0.10, 0 0.
and point 1. Remember our lesson, the sum of all probabilities must be equal to 1. Point 1 plus point 1 is point 2, plus point 2 is point 4, plus point 2 is point 6, plus point 2 is point 8, plus point 1 is point 9, plus point 1 is equal to 1. So our probability distribution is correct. Last step is step 4. Draw the histogram of the sampling distribution of the sample means. I hope you still remember doing this. So first, we draw our y-axis followed by our x-axis. And then we label our y-axis as what? The probability. So we have here the probability of the sample means. And the x-axis is the sample means. Now, for the probability, we have two values here. The first one is 0 0.1. And another value is 0 0.2. For our sample means, we have 1.5. 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, and 4.5. Now, let us draw. So, for 1.5, the probability is 0.1. So, 1.5, the probability is 0.1. Next, for 2, is also 0.1. For 2.5, we have 0.2. So, it's here. For 3, also 0.2 here. For 3.5, also 0.2. For 4.1, so here. And for 4.5, also 0.1. This is now the histogram of the sampling distribution of the sample means. Let us recall our population. To determine the mean of the population, you simply add all the values and divide by the population size. So we have 1 plus 2 is 3. Plus 3 is 6, plus 4 is 10, plus 5 is 15. Divided by the population size is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 15 divided by 5 is equal to 3. Now take a look at our histogram. The mean is also equal to 3. Meaning, the mean of the population is equal to the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample means. And that is one of the properties of sampling distribution of the sample means. The mean of the sampling distribution of the sample means equals the mean of the population. In symbol, the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample means equals the mean of the population. We can also read this as the mean of all sample means is equal to the population mean. Number two, the standard deviation of the sample means is called the standard error of the mean. In symbol, it is the standard deviation of the sample means. Here it is, a standard deviation of the sample means. This is also known as a standard error of the mean. And it is equal to the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. It is an approximate measure of the amount by which sample means deviate from the population mean. And number three, the sampling distribution of the sample mean, regardless of the sample size, has a normal distribution with a mean, mu, and standard deviation of standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of the sample size. Sample size and the standard error of the mean. So what is the relationship between them? The larger the sample size, the smaller the standard error of the mean. So as n increases, the standard error of the mean decreases. Meaning, the smaller the standard error of the mean is, the closer the sample means are to the population mean. And conversely, the larger the standard error of the mean is, the more dispersed the sample means from the population mean. Let's have an example. The result of the first summative test in statistics and probability shows a population mean of 34 and a standard deviation of 5. So we'll go through this one by one. Let's have the first one, letter A. 
determine the mean of all sample means. So remember that the population mean is equal to the mean of all sample means. So if the population mean is equal to 34, then it follows that the mean of all sample means is also equal to 34. Letter B, determine the standard error of the mean if number 1, n is equal to 10. So first, let us recall the formula. So the standard error of the mean is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. So for number 1, our n is equal to 10. And then our population standard deviation is given, and that is equal to 5. So let us substitute those values, and this will give us 1.5811. Next, for number 2, n is equal to 50. So we're just going to replace this by 50. And this will give us 0 0.7071. And last one, n is equal to 100. So let us replace this by 100. And this will give us 0 0.5. Let's continue. Letter C, what happens to the standard error as n increases? So let us recall our answer in letter B. So let us see. When our n is equal to 10, we have this as our standard error. When n is equal to 50, we have this one. And when n is equal to 100, we have this one. So what happens to the standard error as our n increases? The standard error decreases as n increases. And letter D, which sample size will give you a better estimate of the population mean? Why? The answer is n is equal to 100. Because the larger the sample size, the smaller the standard error of the mean. For the summary, again, here are the steps in constructing sample distribution of the sample means. Now, it is time to check your understanding. Pause this video for more time. Let us answer. We are given ages of four siblings, 18, 20, 22, and 24. Sample size of two. Construct histogram for sampling distribution of the sample means and prove that the mean of all sample means is equal to the population mean. Let us start. Number one, we have to determine the possible number of sample means. So our capital N is the population size. That is one, two, three, four. N is small letter N is the sample size, which is two. Let us substitute those in this formula. Four factorial is four times three times two times one. Two factorial is two times one. 4 minus 2 is 2, so 2 factorial, 2 times 1. So from here, we can cancel out 2 and 1, and then we can simplify 4 and 2, and this will become 2. So 2 times 3 is 6 divided by 1, and 6 divided by 1 is 6. Step 2, let us list all the possible random samples and solve for the sample mean of each set of sample. Let us recall our population and our sample size. Let's have our table. Our first set of sample taken two at a time. We have 1820, 1822, 1824. Then we have 20, 22, 20, 24, and 22, 24. For the sample mean, 18 plus 20 divided by 2 is equal to 19. 18 plus 22 divided by 2 is equal to 20. 18 plus 24 divided by 2 is equal to 21. 20 plus 22 divided by 2 is equal to 21. 20 plus 24 divided by 2 is equal to 22. And 22 plus 24 divided by 2 is equal to 23. Let's continue. Construct a frequency and probability distribution table of the sample means. So let us arrange our sample means here in ascending order. We have 19, 20, 
21, 22, and 23. For the frequency, we just have to count how many times this sample mean occur. For 19, just once. 20, just once. 21, twice. 22, once. And 23, once. Let us get the total. 1 plus 1 is 2, plus 2 is 4, plus 1, 5, plus 1, 6. For the probability, simply get the frequency divided by the total. So this is 1 over 6. Earlier, we had decimal. This time, I'll be having fractions. This is also 1 over 6, 2 over 6, 1 over 6, 1 over 6. Let us sum this up. 1, 2, 3, 4. 5, 6. 6 over 6 or equal to 1. Our probability distribution is correct. Last step, let us draw the histogram. Let's start with our y-axis followed by our x-axis. Let us label our y-axis as the probability and our x-axis as the sample mean. We have two values for probability. The first one is 1 over 6. And the other one is 2 over 6. For the sample means, we have 19, 20, 21, 22, and 23. Let us graph for 19, 1 over 6. For 20, also 1 over 6. For 21, 2 over 6. For 22, 1 over 6. And for 23, 1 over 6. And finally, let us prove that the mean of the population is equal to the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample means. Let us recall our population. Let us get the mean of this. 18 plus 20 is 38. 38 plus 22 is 60. 60 plus 24 is 84. Divided by 1, 2, 3, 4. 84 divided by 4 is equal to 21. Let us take a look at our histogram. The mean is also 21. Therefore, the mean of the population is equal to the mean of all sample means. Gets? Our next lesson is mean and variance of the sampling distribution of the sample means.